Okay, today we're doing something different. We're down at the harbour, down at Apollo Bay. It's the Easter weekend, long weekend. And um, just come down here to check out the uh, caravel, the uh, caravel replica here. Uh, it's called uh, Notorious. It's been in the harbour here all uh, all weekend. And a um, small fee, you can go on board and have a look around, have a look uh, neath deck. Um, the owners, uh, Graham and Felicity, nice people, they actually live on board 11 months of the year. Uh, nice people, ask them any questions at all and they're happy to, uh, to answer your questions. Definitely worth a small fee of coming on board. The, uh, the handwork on there, you actually see all the hand carving and stuff, is absolutely beautiful. It's got the smell of an old timber boat and it's got the creeks to go with it. So absolutely beautiful. So Graham, so I'm just looked aboard the boat, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a lot of work has gone into it. Yeah, it has. Um, it took about nine years to build it and okay. two years of research before I could start on it because there's very little known about these ships. Yep. Um, in the 15th century they didn't have plans at all, they hadn't worked that out, they were all just built by eye. Okay. So they're not really documented as we do today and as well as that they've never found the remains of one anywhere so they're okay. very much an enigma these ships. Yeah, yeah that's good. so um, how did you build it? Did you use old style sort of tools and stuff? Because there's a lot, of, a lot of woodwork on it in the way of like carving and stuff. I mean you kept it pretty much, you haven't finished it to like a smooth finish in areas and, and stuff like that. So obviously they probably wouldn't have been that way anyway. So you... Yeah, well like I say they've never found one so I don't really know but you know yep. I think it's a fairly safe guess that they would have been just a hand finished thing like that yep um, caravels are a very single purpose design which was for exploring so they weren't a real show pony like some of the other bigger ships um, you know yeah. that were a statement of the wealth of the king or anything okay these yep. were a workhorse yep. so they would have been fairly yeah um, so you used the old hand planes and stuff like that? No, I didn't, no. I used, um, well, I'd build a big band saw to break the logs down on because a lot of these um, cypress logs are over six foot in diameter. Okay. They're very big. Um, then there's a lot of chainsaw work. Yep. Um, every sort of power tool, really, that, that I can get could, my hands get, yeah. on. Yep. Um, basically because... I, I built her entirely myself, every bit of it, so to have done that with hand tools, um, I'd yeah. still be chipping still away, be on away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, but the whole ship is finished up by hand, okay. with an ad, so it has that beautiful hand finish. Yeah, um, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I've noticed uh, in the joins and stuff, you got you just put like wooden caps in there at all, or was there, what's behind the... Uh, well, it's all, it, it, apart from we have some bolts in the keel and in the main knees, Yep. But all the rest of it, all the planking, all the decking is all fastened with wooden nails. Okay, yeah. Um, which of course is Would have what was used in ship yeah. and lots of other construction for thousands of years. Yep. And um, they're very okay. fantastic. All right. There's there's no electrolysis, no corrosion, no nail sickness in the timber, so yep. um, they're so, permanent fastening. Yeah, and what about maintenance in the boat? As in, is there, I mean, obviously it's probably going to have a few leaks and stuff like that. Is there anything yeah, like that? Yeah, no, she's very tight. She's double yep. planked, two layers of two inches thick timber. So it's four inches overall with tar in between. Yep. And the outside layer is caulked in the conventional method with cotton and then a mixture of tar and ash over that. So there's very little leak. Um, we pull her out every year either on a slip or in a travel lift to clean the bottom and anti foul it like any boat. Yep. Apart from that, she's very low maintenance. Um, this black oil finish on it is um, a finish, a period finish they used to call black varnish and it's Stockholm tar pitch and linseed oil and consequently it doesn't flake or chip or anything so there's no sandpapering involved, we don't even wash it, all we do is get the brush out and, and apply it so it, it makes it really very easy um, yeah. to maintain. Apart from that, replace the odd line that might chafe through and things but no, she's actually okay. quite a low maintenance risk. So how many, like, uh, I guess, nautical miles has it sailed, do you think, so far? Um, you... Well, we've sailed about 12,000 miles, you know. Most of it's been on the east coast. We, we did do a few thousand in Bass Strait, but um, all the rest has been on the east coast. We've done three trips up there, yep. um, covering from Hobart to Port Douglas. Okay. And is it a finished product, or I guess it's one of those things where you continue working on it? Yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. A, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Um, 
you know, Felicity and I live on board. We spend about 11 months of each year on board and we just yep. travel around and visit different ports like this. So okay. we don't have a home port. Yep. Um, but because we live on her, there's always something else we can think of doing yeah. to make her a bit more comfortable or yep. whatever. But I guess you still try and keep with the original sort of whole idea of it being a, a replica of a... That's right, a, yeah. An old yeah. So we're very careful about, um, you know, keeping any modern equipment yep. hidden away so when you go on board you won't see anything yeah. from the last uh, few hundred years. Absolutely beautiful. you got the, the creaking of the timber and the smell of the wood. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So, um, so what was the hardest bit on there that you sort of, was there anything that was a real challenge for you? To, oh, I mean, obviously you're skilled with what you've done. Yeah, no, it, it all went along very well, actually, really smoothly. Um, getting towards the end, really, the caulking, which is sealing up in between the planks, that was pretty gruelling because, um, you know, there's a lot of flat area underneath, so I'm on my back. Yeah. <laughs> hammering up and squirting yeah. hot tar, oh, you know, okay. and the things birds, which pours <laughs> out in their hair and all yep. sorts of things, oh, and that crazy. was very hard to get up every morning and start cooking tar up, and yep. you know that was yeah. that was probably the, the the hardest bit, but it was also the last job that needed doing before the launch, so there was plenty of incentive so, yeah. to sort of work through it. I yeah. guess it's like I've I the sort of car, I mean, the old cars and stuff like that. And, you get to the stage where you start and you all guns a ho go for it and then when you realize such a big project i get to i guess there was a stage where it was sort of like you know just want to get it finished yeah, type thing and not wears really off. No, no not really you know yeah. actually the the thought that she'd ever be launched and in the water was always something that was just so far in the future yeah. it really wasn't something we were thinking about and the yeah. the um launch actually crept up on us you know all of a sudden we realized oh, Finished, you know, we better yeah. start trying to organise a launch. Okay. Yep. Um, so it wasn't. It was. It was like a really great job. I just got up every morning and worked on it, and the, the actual end result wasn't really the main motivation. You know, I was yep. enjoying the process. Which yeah. Is, is very important in something like yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big. If you were job. just looking at the end, you'd never get there. Yeah. Yeah. You just need that, that love for it. What was your before you started building this? Did you? Um, I was making furniture before we built this, and that's yep. what we originally began collecting in the Cypress Pool. Yep. Um, we were making furniture for about 10 years from the Cypress. I built all the saws to break the logs down and all that sort of thing, and um, then that just sort of morphed into a chip. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. It's definitely come a long way from a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot more fun too. Yeah. yeah. I imagine you get the best result at the end of it. I mean, yeah. that's the Thank you. Was, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you for the uh, information. <laughs> and uh, so, where are you off to from here? Um, well, we'll be here until next Sunday, um, the third, and then after that, we'll go back to Geelong for a couple of weeks. Yep. And then we're heading up to Sydney to Middle Harbour. Okay. Um, and then, then after that, it'll be Brisbane for yep. the next school holidays. Okay. And is a, it's a two-man sail job. Is it like can you sail it by yourself? We do. Yeah, just yeah. Felicity and I yeah. sail it. Originally, we had a crew on board for the first year while we learned how to sail. It it just sit very you can't read about how to sail a ship yeah. like this, you just have to work it out. Yep. Um, but now, no, we, we handle a piece of cake, just the two of us, and um, we've done many thousands of miles. Sometimes we have family and friends, but okay. no. we do like just the two of us, especially up north where we're spending a lot of time anchored off yep. islands and all that sort of thing. Okay. It's great. Yeah. Alright, one more question. What's your plan in the end? Which is where you are? Oh, well, that's very much an unknown thing. Um, Where you end up, you end up. Yeah, we're, we don't know what will happen with her in the end. This is, you know, totally into the unknown. We, yep. um, we'll we just continue doing this for as long as we can. Yep. You know, maybe she'll end up in a maritime yep. museum or just as an exhibit somewhere. Geelong yeah. are very keen to yeah. have her as a home port and things. So, I think um, she should be she's, sailing. She's very, yeah, yeah, well, that's... That's yeah, the thing, yeah, she's yeah. A, a full working sailing ship and that's what she should be doing yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Spot on. Yeah, right. that's what it should be yeah. doing. She should be out here getting around to the different ports. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you know, I could spend hours on there. I spent uh, 10, 15 minutes walking around, but I think you could spend hours on there just checking out the work. So, yeah, great. Thanks, Graham. You're very well. Uh, Thank you. Should I do the tour?